the headquarters of the RSPCA, one of the oldest charities in Britain. Uh, Mr. David Bowles, who is the Director of Communications here at the RSPCA. Uh, good morning, David. Hi, welcome. welcome. Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about the RSPCA and its uh, goals? Yeah, the, the RSPCA, as you, as you said, is the, is the world's biggest and oldest animal welfare group. Uh, we've been around since 1824. And the, the reason why we were set up, um, and a lot of people forget, but we were set up before the police, um, before many other enforcement agencies. And I think that shows how much people cared in those days and continue to care about animals and animal welfare. And the reasons why we were set up was to improve um, animal welfare um, and help reduce cruelty. And that's been our mission ever since. Um, we do that primarily through uh, three ways. We um, educate people, going into schools, uh, working with younger people um, in all communities um, to understand and have empathy to animals. Uh, we campaign um, to improve legislation, to improve standards, to improve the way that people buy their animals or keep their animals. Um, and then uh, th those are our main areas, but then of course sometimes those fail and you have to mop up after cruelty has happened. And so we also have an enforcement mechanism through our inspectorate where we, uh, we have 300 inspectors who are out there every day of the year, um, 24 hours a day, um, trying to uh, keep the, uh, the laws of the land being enforced properly and implemented properly. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously uh, we work in every area um, in England and Wales. Um, and obviously in certain areas, uh, like uh, certain parts of London, Leicester, Birmingham, uh, the Indian community is essential to our work because they make up a very large percentage of the population. Um, and we have to work very closely with the, that community, work with their community leaders. Um, and obviously there are challenges for us in terms of communication sometimes, in terms of breaking down cultural barriers. But for us, it's, it's, it's a really important area for our work and also it's of growing importance because uh, the populations in those areas are, are growing and for us it's an area that we perhaps have neglected for too long and we need to work much more closely with those communities. Mm. That's, uh, I mean, that's very honest and at the same time it's, it's quite amazing the range of areas you work in. When you say animals, do you just mean pets or do you mean other like farm animals, do you mean uh, wild animals as well, when you say animal welfare? No, we, we cover every single animal. Um, we don't make any, any uh, differences between them. Although I would have to say that um, the RSPCA is, is most well known for its work with dogs and cats mm. and probably about 60% uh, of our work and 60% of our money goes towards those animals. But actually um, we do an awful lot with wildlife, um, things like uh, deer, mm. particularly who have been in road traffic accidents. Mm. We uh, do an awful lot with farm animals mm. and the RSPCA has uh, set up Freedom Food, which is the only higher welfare assurance scheme in this country. Um, and uh, that has also promoted a lot of improvements in animal welfare because people have a lot of power. People forget that they have a lot of power, but they do have a lot of power. So for instance, if you go into your shop um, and you're doing your weekly shop and you have the power then to make a choice to go for higher welfare chicken or, or uh, higher welfare um, uh, other products. Mm. And, and that's really important because you're making a positive choice there to, to actually get that particular product um, mm. and to improve animal welfare. So the RSPCA is not about just um, chastising people, it's about providing solutions and it's about education and, and that for us is, is a really important thing, particularly obviously with the Indian community where, where there, is, there is this whole history of, of animals in, in the culture um, and an understanding of, and an empathy for animals. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, also this area of uh, changing less legislation and influencing legislation <coughs> is actually quite a professional activity and requires skill and requires uh, determination and of course can achieve a lot uh, because uh, as a community many of us are concerned about the legislation and especially about sometimes cruelty to animals but prayer is not enough, you know, we, we do need to act and we would like to act. So. Can you tell us a little bit more about that area? I mean, what do you do to try to change the legislation and, and, and bring positive welfare practices and rules and regulations? 
Well, uh, the RSPCA was set up 186 years ago um, because the first legislation was, was instituted in, uh, in England. Um, and ever since then, we've been trying to improve it. Um, and we've got to a stage now where the UK um, has uh, probably over uh, 50 different laws relating to virtually every animal that you could imagine. Um, only uh, four years ago we passed a completely new law on uh, animal welfare, which was the first time we'd reviewed the animal welfare legislation for nearly 100 years. So it just goes to show that science is always continually changing. Mm. We're beginning to understand much more about what animals need, mm. how they feel, mm. um, what, what they're doing, um, and the legislation needs to keep up with that. So what we do is we take the new science, the new available information, mm -hmm. give that to legislators and say that uh, these laws are out of date and they need to be improved. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for us, um, improving legislation is, is a very important way of, of uh, improving understanding because it gives us a baseline standard to, mm -hmm. uh, to actually help animals. But of course, going back to the point about the consumer and the public, they're really important because their decision on animals is actually just as important about as what the law is because they can always decide uh, how to choose their food or they could decide what pet to choose um, and also how to keep that animal. So this is all about improving human behaviour. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of communication, presumably your website is the best resource for people to find out more about the work of the RSPCA, maybe even how to join the RSPCA. Do you have what what channels do you have for? Yeah, the the, uh, the the best way is. I mean, the RSPCA is a fairly modern organisation, so we communicate through virtually um, every every medium that you could imagine, um, through uh, through uh, letters, but much more in the recent past through um, social media. Uh, we have a Twitter account, we have a Facebook account, which. Uh, is, is obviously aimed much more at the younger people. But our website has, um, which has just been revamped, has virtually everything you could want to, to read about animals. So if you go onto the website, which is www.rspca.org.uk, you can find not only um, what we're doing um, in terms of our campaigns or our messaging, you can also find, if you're thinking about getting a, a pet, for instance, um, what you should be looking out for, how to keep it properly, what the legislation is on those areas. I'm with Catherine Cottrell, who is the head of fundraising here at the RSPCA. And uh, being a charity, you know, looking after the welfare of animals, one of the major needs of any charity, as we all know, is funding. Uh, so I'll start, Catherine, by asking you why you need money and what what do you do with the money? Well, the RSPCA is set up to look after all animals um, in England and Wales. So, for starters, that's a that's that's a huge responsibility. And then we're the only organisation that actually has the, the power to go straight to the heart of cruelty. And so we have we have an inspectorate that can actually, and we have the, the power to actually prosecute. So we can make sure that we're actually mm. dealing in stopping cruelty and also stopping it before it even happens. So to 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 run that kind of operation, we rely entirely on. On, um, on really on public support and you know kind donations from the public, and on top of that, we're heavily involved in changing, in trying to change legislation, in improving animal welfare standards. From that goes from farm animals right the way through to looking at um, to, to wildlife and mm -hmm. and animals that people think you know pets, cats and dogs. So mm -hmm. so when we have um, science departments that that, mm -hmm. that conduct um, studies that help to us to look to how we could improve the lives of animals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, across across England and Wales and beyond, mm. um, internationally. Mm. But can you not do this with a group of volunteers? I mean, why do you need a professional team and headquarters and staff and all that? Well, that's a really good question, and we do we do have volunteers, volunteers who work in our animal centres um, and um, and do help out in terms of fundraising as well. And they're they're really really valuable um, part of the organisation. But um, but we need do need to have full time staff. And um, we have in terms of the inspectorate, they're they're professionals. Those these the inspectors they have to be trained. They're they operate. It's very much like um, a, a police service, I suppose you could say. And um, and in terms of the those people working in the science departments, there they've um, they come with that those skills and the background and the knowledge in their specific um, professional areas. So, like um, like 
other large charities in the UK, then mm. yes, we need, we, need, we need the balance of the two, I guess, but mm. it is, a, it is a, a costly exercise being able to, mm. to deliver all this work. Mm. So how can uh, people, businessmen in the community, uh, individuals, uh, how can they support the work, the excellent work that you do? Well, there's lots of ways to get involved and to um, and to help the RSPCA, and um, one of them is to you could you could become a member, mm -hmm. and that would mean that you would also, aside from giving us a subscription fee, mm -hmm. you would actually also be able to be involved in the organisation. You come to annual general meetings, mm -hmm. um, you might be also become a member of your branch. You could mm -hmm. go along to committee meetings mm -hmm. there and get involved in about how the organisation is run and find out more about about the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We have on. Um, uh, a lot of people who give us on a regular monthly basis from their bank account, which we're extremely grateful for, and we also get to send them that newsletters and, and tell them about the work that we're doing when we might need to have additional funds for, for, for particular special pieces of work that we're doing to help, to help animals. And we've got some more, more fun ways as well of, of giving us money in terms of um, you could um, take part in our, on our raffle and sell raffle tickets or you could um, have a weekly lottery that you could take part in as well. And, um, and we also we sell, we sell gifts in a, in a catalogue and so at Christmas time that's, that's good and, and we sell those online as well. So there's, there's lots of different ways and, and we, it, well, however small that amount of money might be, it's, it's all really, really, really valuable to us and we really appreciate it. Do you have any immediate kind of projects, big projects coming up where you need help for? We've got a number of different animal centres across the country and, um, and sometimes they might need either, either refurbishment and so in terms of, sort of capital projects there can be something really specific that might be in a local community and um, that would be really serving the people and the animals of that community so that's something that is often of interest to, of, often of interest to people and, um, and then there are, um, there's also according to if you're interested in particular types of animals or particularly interested in, for example, the, the, the farming industry. And so, so you can support particular projects and, uh -huh. and we, we, you know, we, we, we welcome people to contact us and for us to be able to talk to them about specific pieces of work as well that, um, that, that they might actually want to support. I am with David Allen, who is the Head of Education. David, can you enlighten us on, right. on the, the things you do to educate? Well, for, for me, the most important letter in the RSPCA is the P for prevention, and to me, I translate that into education. One of the things I strongly believe is that there's no problem animals, there are just problem people. So it is about working with people mm -hmm. to improve their understanding of what they do. Mm -hmm. So in education, we work in schools, we work with teachers mostly, mm -hmm. so that they're the multipliers getting out the messages. Mm -hmm. And our approach really says that animals have needs and that we have a responsibility as humans to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. And one of my favourite activities actually starts with drawing a, a smiley face mm -hmm. and saying, what is it that you need to make you healthy and happy? So young people think about all the food, their friends, the toys they might need, a nice house to live in. And then you say, okay, change that face into a cat, draw some whiskers, put some ears on or a dog. And then say, how many of those needs stay the same? And it's surprising that toys stay the same, having friends stays the same, as well as the basics of food and water. So it really is recognising that we as humans have a responsibility for animals. Yeah. And that's part of our educational message. How can the Indian community, a community which has a strong philosophy of animal care and compassion, work with you on the education agenda and the prevent agenda? Of course, yeah. Well, I think tradition and religion and culture has a great part to play in our attitudes towards animals. So understanding this attitude is very important. Mm -hmm. The Indian community already has this compassion as a central core value. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is about young people and old people discussing these issues, mm -hmm. adding the richness to animal welfare yeah. so that our different perspectives can be shared and understood mm -hmm. and that's going to help animals when humans understand more about animals yeah. and our views of them that's how we're going to improve their situation in their life mm. so how can we help with the education agenda more practically supposing there are some of us who want to get involved or well, or take this message further. You, you can get involved in many levels. I would say one of the first things is to look at our website, to look at the many different activities we do, from campaigning to hands-on animal care, and then really get in contact with the local groups that exist, are called our branches. Mm -hmm. Many of them have centres or they have shops, mm -hmm. and go and talk to the people there and share your views with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll be met with open arms.